The last parameter we have under the menstrual cycle data analysis is what we call the sedimentation rate. Sedimentation rate. Okay? So this particular um, parameter is still talking about the composition of the blood in the reproductive system. The composition of blood in the reproductive organ. All right, we are talking about during the menstrual cycle. During the menstrual cycle, this area is trying to check the sedimentation rate of the blood. The sedimentation rate of the blood during the menstrual cycle. Now, let me say this. You will hear, you've been hearing the popular statement, maybe someone wants to go for tests to check for whatever is going on in the body, you see them saying, go for an ESR, go for an ESR test, all right? This is, the, this is what we are talking about. ESR simply means erythrocyte sedimentation rate. Erythrocyte sedimentation rate. Now, erythrocyte is basically, is basically talking about the red blood cells, the red blood cells. Now, the blood composition is made up of the white blood cells, the red blood cells, and the plasma. The red blood cells, the white blood cells, and the plasma. Okay, we, we know that the white blood cells focuses on um, generating cells for fighting pathogens. All right, now the red blood cells has its own role that it plays, while the, the, the plasma is the liquid part of the blood that helps to, to, to flush out toxins, to flush out waste, okay, because it is, it is the plasma that gives mobility to the red blood cells and the white blood cells. But all those ones are not our concern. Our area of interest is the red blood cells, the red blood cells and its sedimentation rate. Before we continue, hear me out first. Hear me out. Our training is coming up very soon, in the month of May, 15th to 20th of May. You see, you have enough time to prepare for it, all right? Come for our training, where you are going to have access to the full package of the training on the quantum resonance magnetic analyzer, on the non-linear system analyzer. We're also going to be exposing you to learn how to interpret medical lab results medical lab results sometimes a patient brings the result from the lab and you don't know how to interpret it we are bringing a medical lab scientist to come and teach you how to interpret medical lab results we are also bringing in medical lab equipment to expose you to these machines machines like the ecg machine that's the electrocardiogram machine for the heart we also bringing in the microscope, the centrifuge machine, the sphygmanometer. We're going to teach you how to operate the sphygmanometer. We're also going to expose you to how to carry out your analysis and several other stuff. We're also bringing in a medical doctor that will teach us basics of human anatomy. We are bringing in a biochemist that will also help us understand our biochemical structure. Okay, because all of these are important in diagnosis and um, in treatment, okay, and there are also other therapeutic equipment that we are going to be exposing you to practically, like the meridian massager. We're going to bring an expert that will teach you how to operate the meridian massage. We are going to teach you how to operate the detox machine, and you will practically be exposed to operate the quantum resonance magnetic analyzer and the non-linear system analyzer. Even wet and dry, even wet and dry coffee therapy, we are going to expose you to practical sessions with this equipment. All right, you can't afford to miss this training. You can send me a WhatsApp message using the number that you can see on the screen. Trust me, you cannot afford to miss this training. Now, the sedimentation rate of the red blood cells is used to predict certain factors during the menstrual cycle, all right? Basically, uh, blood, the red blood cells in the blood doesn't settle. When we say sedimentation, we're talking about the rate at which it settles. Usually, when you go to a lab 
and they are trying to separate the red blood cells from the white blood cells, then from the plasma, they put it into an equipment like, uh, I think that's the, the centrifuge. Okay, so the blood, sample of the blood is drawn and it's put into a long test tube and they are put into a centrifuge machine and the, 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 the RPM, the, the rate at which the, 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 they, are, they are rotated at a very high velocity in order to separate the red blood cell from the white blood cell and from the plasma. Then when all this, is, when this process is going on, there's a counting, there's a time count to, to study the rate at which the red blood cells settle down at the bottom. All right? When it settles down at the bottom, the speed at which, or the speed at which it settles down, we use it to be able to predict the health condition of the body or, or the organ of interest. Basically, if the sedimentation rate is faster than normal, it is basically indicating inflammation going on somewhere. Why is that? When there's an inflammation in the system, when there's an inflammation somewhere in the body, these red blood cells clump together and this makes it heavier. And because they are clumping together and making it heavier, it makes the sedimentation, the settling down of these red blood cells to go faster. And that's how you use it to predict that there's an inflammation going on somewhere. Because on a normal day, the settlement of or the sedimentation of red blood cells is not supposed to go as fast as the that of a case where there is an inflammation in the body. Okay, so um, normally, I, like I said, a red blood cell will sink slowly, but if there's an inflammation in the body, it's going to sink faster. All right, so faster ESR reading is implying higher levels of inflammation, and not only inflammation. We can also use this, please take note, we can also use this to diagnose pregnancy. Two places I have mentioned now under the menstrual cycle that you can put together to predict pregnancy. The bitter hormone, regular moderately at normal high, severely at normal high, and then the sedimentation rate, the sedimentation rate, if it is reading moderately at normal high, then it is also a pointer to pregnancy. So the sedimentation rate being moderately abnormal high, severely abnormal high, may be pointing to either the presence of an inflammation or the presence of um, early stage of pregnancy. All right. So now let's go back to the result analysis of the QRM device and check the sedimentation rate. We are going to be explaining to you what the normal rate ought to be and the symptoms of an abnormal high and an abnormal low result. So looking at the sedimentation rate here, the normal range is supposed to be from 6.326 to 8.018. 6.326 to 8.018. And so when we have the sedimentation rate, that is the ESR, when we have it on moderately abnormal high, severely abnormal high, three major things that I want you to take note of that may be going on in that body. Number one is the person may be experiencing one form of inflammation or the other. The person may be experiencing one form of inflammation or the other. Number two, the, that can also be indicating pregnancy. That can also be indicating pregnancy. Usually, a pregnant person, the ESR that is said, the ESR rate is usually very high. It's usually very high. The sedimentation rate is usually very high. Normally, the ESR does not sink down that fast. But if the person is pregnant, the ESR is going to sink down fast. So it's another way of predicting early stage of pregnancy. Number three is that that could also signify that the person may be in her menstrual period. That person may be in her menstrual period. So if you want to check through the quantum analyzer how someone may be in her menstrual period, you are checking sedimentation rate, moderately abnormal high, severely abnormal high, depending on the, how the flow is. Okay, so that's that about abnormal high result. 
Now, when it comes to abnormal low results, a low result, maybe a moderately abnormal low, severely abnormal low, may be indicating that there may be a one form of blood disorder or the other, e.g., sickle cell disease um, and leukocytosis, that's a, a very high white blood cell level. And it could also indicate heart failure. It could also indicate heart failure. And it can also indicate one kind of kidney or liver problem. It could be indicating one form of kidney or liver problem. Alright, so this brings us to the end of our study on the menstrual data, menstrual cycle data analysis.